How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be talking about Heavy Metal issue number 31. This is October of 1979 and in addition to being a cool Heavy Metal issue this is also the special H.P. Lovecraft issue. H.P. Lovecraft, a really cool horror sci-fi American writer, uh, came after Poe and you get this really cool uh, cover uh, Heavy Metal in the orange yellow on this uh, orange red uh, marbling and a picture of Lovecraft there holding by these uh, little bracket things and you get Lovecraft posing with this uh, starfish monster on another planet a very uh, a very like him thing to do uh, but a fun trippy cover and then on the back you get this note um, in celebration of Halloween a cauldron of ghouls and bugaboos from Mobius, Durit, Saddam and others plus hobgoblins, boogies and various ne'er-do-wells. Is that how you spell uh, ne'er-do-wells? Um, but anyway below that you get a photo of someone in a frame floating through space and the glass is cracking and they're screaming so uh, two really fun picture uh, themed uh, elements. We uh, open up the magazine and we get the table of contents and if you want to read uh, what all stories are in here or the uh, the credits you can pause it to do so you see that this is a uh, volume three uh, volume three number six and by, by the contents we get this creepy image of a, a girl and there's this thing in the water with her uh, not sure what's going on but Creepy, uh, creepy imagery there. That's uh, that's cool. And as a fun side note, uh, the ad next to it: "Pick a pack. JB has your size." This is an ad for uh, rolling paper, uh, cigarette rolling papers. So uh, pretty cool to see uh, an old timey ad that you wouldn't see in print nowadays. Anyway, um, after that we get. The letters page, or not letters, the uh, introduction to 31 with this cool Lovecraft picture art. And it talks about how it's hard to do a Lovecraft introduction because you either know all about him or you know nothing about him. And it talks about how this is a um, uh, English translation of Homage à Lovecraft from Metal Halant, the, uh, the French version of the, the magazine, the original. And... Um, now let's go ahead and talk about the stories. I'm not going to be doing any major spoilers, but I do want you guys to have a basic understanding as to what these stories are about. I want to say my piece on a few plot points. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about each story. You get Final Justice, and you get this uh, this couple here who finds an old castle with a late night play going on. Uh, they read the history, and they find you know this uh, this girl, her uh, possible lover comes up, but she rejects him. He, in a fit of rage, kills him and jumps out the uh, the balcony, and that's the way the story is known for forever. They are going to do a play of these events, and they're worried it's going to not happen because it's uh, rained out, but the guard is like, oh no, we're, we're going to do this, it's inside, and you see all the actors, uh, the actors are there, and they're going to do a free-form play where they're going to be in their positions that they would have been at the time, and you have to follow them around, and if you're not in the right place, you might miss something, so a, a cool play style there, but of course they're going to show what really happened, and there's a, you know, creepiness about, um, this is uh, kind of like an old-timey Tales from the Crypt story. Not a super, uh, more uh, Lovecraft-inspired than actually Lovecraft and uh, well, more old-timey EC Comics-inspired. And that's the thing is, uh, this next story, The Dunwich Whore, is the only one that's a straight Lovecraft adaptation. Most of them are just uh, Lovecraft-inspired or loose horror. Uh, but you get this one, and it's a large blocks of text with some illustrations, so more like an illustrated story. Um, and this is based on H.P. Uh, Lovecraft's The Dunwich Whore, one of his best and one of my favorite stories, a really cool one. You get this black and white illustrations, and it talks about how old man Wheatley lives alone with his daughter, and one day they have a son mysteriously out of uh, nowhere. They don't know who the father is, but judging by that face, it may have been a monster. And they got something growing in their barn, and it's going to turn into scientist versus a Lovecraftian horror. Uh, a really great Lovecraft story, one of my favorites, and it's cool to see it adapted in here. Um, and it's broken half. The It continues on page 75 
Um, anyway, up next we have Cthulhu by Mobius, and you can see it's spelled differently. You get the President of the United States, and he's in a meeting, but he's really thinking about Cthulhu, and he wants to get away from one of his presidential duties to do his secret presidential duties. You see him suit up, and he's going to go into the other world, which is a crazy fun idea. I love the, the colors and the art in this one, and the idea that the president's like, ah, I don't want to do my handshaking presidential duties. I want to do my otherworldly Lovecraftian presidential duties. Um, after that, we get a story, Zeno meets Dr. Fear and is consumed. Sorry about the, the censorship there, uh, YouTube's idea, not mine. But you get this character named Zeno, who is uh, talking to the god of chaos and saying, surely not everything's chaotic, surely there are some things in life that are certainties. And he enters this hole, uh... And he's going to go on an adventure and see if uh, the god of chaos is right or if he's right. Are there any certainties in life? This is a short two-page story. I won't spoil the end for you. Uh, but cool for being so short. Up next we have The Thing. And uh, sorry, this is uh, not related to John Carpenter's The Thing. But you get this guy being questioned because he was the last to see uh, this certain man alive. And you find out... This guy was an expert in the occult, and he was being friends with him, but uh, that he would never let him get too close because he knew his mind could not handle the, uh, the deep and dark truths. And one day he takes him to a graveyard to, uh, to look at this secret uh, passageway that he's uncovered, but he leaves him at the top with a phone, and he's not going to let him in, and you're going to see, uh, well, what all he finds down there. Pretty uh, pretty creepy, and, you know, it tends to be a, a Lovecraft trope is uh, having the, uh, the friend that's uh, going mad and getting caught up in his business. Up next, the beast. You see some people preparing for an upcoming attack. Well, what's attacking them? The beast are attacking them. And you get to see it's it's dinosaurs. Uh, really got to love heavy metal just doing stuff like that. It's a short three-page story of, hey, here's some people fighting dinosaurs. Because cause why not? And it's really cool just to see, hey, here's a bunch of dinosaurs attacking these people. It's like, you know, it's <laughs> like, hey, here, here's a fun story because why not? We got three pages. Let's shoot for the uh, the moon there. After that, you get... The Man from Black Hole, this guy, he's doing a series of books and he needs research for them, so he goes to Arkham. He checks in to a local boarding house, and then after that, he meets uh, someone at the Mysterious Occult Bookstore, a really creepy guy, uh, almost like a vampire, uh, but not. And he's doing experiments, and he tags along for the experiments, but when it goes too far, he he leaves, and he may have left uh, at the right time. Like I said, it is a common Lovecraft uh, trope to be the uh, friend of the guy who's going uh, who's going crazy. Up next, we get a story called HPL, and you get these two monstrous creatures there, and they're talking about how they want to go see HPL, and they want to, uh, you know, uh, find uh, more information, more knowledge, and they uh, have to answer his riddle. So HPL, you get a, another fictional version of Lovecraft. Uh, the guy in the last story, I forgot to mention this, but he looks a little bit like Lovecraft, and he's called uh, Howard Phillips Wingate, Wingate instead of Lovecraft. So you do get several fictional versions of Lovecraft in this, and you know, uh, for HPL, a three-page story, some monsters going to answer Lovecraft's riddle. Um, after that, we get this two-page spread with this painting here, this painting of an an eyeball man sitting there, and a poem, Love's Craft, to go with it. So, uh, a really fun little, uh, little halfway break. Um, moving on after that, we get Drew... Drewbury's Masterpiece, you get this uh, guy, again, another best friend with the guy who goes crazy. He's 
looking for a truth in his sculptures, and he's sculpting all these monsters, and he sculpts his last one, and he's like, ah, he's got the, the blue face there, and um, flip it over, his last friend arrives, finds him pointing at something that's no longer there, and follows the glowing orange blood trail into the basement. So yeah, you see kind of is a, a Lovecraft trope being the, the best friend with the guy who goes uh, goes mad there. And here's how they show their, their friends. This is an old photo of them with X's on it. Drewsbury and me, or Dewsbury. Um, after that, we get a excerpt from the Necronomicon. You get to see uh, there's H.P. Lovecraft on one side and a Lovecraftian creature on the other. And we open it up, and we get to see excerpts. It's hard to read, so you're not supposed to just know everything. It's the Necronomicon, after all. And really creepy drawings in this uh, city of some kind that they're talking about. And I guess those aliens are what's, uh, what's living there. But really cool to see, you know, you're doing a Lovecraft special. Why not just do the Necronomicon? And then you get the language of cats, which is also a double-page spread, and it talks about a uh, Raymond Carter, a reoccurring Lovecraft char character, understanding that cats have their uh, own ways of going about things. You get the text on top with story there, and you see all the cats. They uh, they walk away into their uh, their sky portal, and you go to the uh, the cat dimension. So, a uh, pretty fun two-page story and. Uh, just a uh, wacky cat shenanigans. Uh, moving right along, we get uh, the chain mail with this uh, this fun alien uh, comic there, and which uh, Heavy Metal actually did the alien comic adaptation. Then we get a three-page story, uh, Pat and Vivian, where this landlord um, gets interrupted in the middle of the night. Someone asking where his, uh, where his friend is, but. You know, the guy's face is obs obscured, and there might be a creepy Lovecraftian reason for that. Um, a three-page story with a fun sort of a twist motif there going on, but I, I don't want to spoil that. But uh, a mysterious stranger in the, uh, the middle of the night, and Vivian answers the door. And then after that, we get really long text block. Uh, this is excerpts from the Alchemist Notebook by David Hurd and William Bates. Uh, this is a section of the novelization of the upcoming movie The Cry of Cthulhu from Paramount Pictures to be released during the summer of 81. Uh, but it talks about how there's this guy, his parents died, he lived with the uncle, the uncle could no longer support him, and in turn, this is Germany, sent him away to the Hitler Youth. And he, of course, gets upset with humanity and wants to bring back the elder gods to uh, to rule it better which uh, gee yeah that's a that's a bad idea uh, but anyway you also get in the middle of this this fun illustration of Cthulhu there uh, Cthulhu and you get uh, the the squid and the eyeball in the mouth it's a a fun alternate take on the design but uh, pretty uh, pretty cool picture uh, you also get why he's doing all this research. It references the book of uh, Ebion, the book of E-I-B-O-N, um, which is from uh, The Beyond, so uh, fun to tie Lovecraft into Fulci there. Um, never did see the movie, though. Um, after that, a brief uh, continuation of the, uh, the Dunwich Whore from earlier. Like I said, they, uh, they broke it in half. Um, and after the Dunwich Whore... We get, flipping through this off camera so I don't spoil anything, ah yes, the story Bad Breath, and it talks about how um, some guys like certain types of food, and the food relates to uh, the type of woman that they like, but then you get this guy who likes all kinds of food, and in, in turn is obsessed with women, but no woman like him. So, one day after all these women reject him, he meets this mysterious guy in the alley that's going to offer him a love potion, but rather than just getting woman, which it appears to do that, it also has this nasty Lovecraftian side effect. I really do like this, uh, 
this nice print work and the artwork where it's these blocks of color and the, the ink drawings and then you superimpose that with some uh, nice shaded artwork from time to time. And then uh, you get the, the last story, I believe, after that one. Flip through, flip through. There we are. The final story in this, the agony column. This guy is alone at the bar and decides to answer a newspaper ad for a woman who, uh, who is lonely and seeking company. We get a bit in the future. We know this is going to end terribly. And he, you know, takes his photo and he gets word back from the woman and he's going to meet her and it's going to be great. Well, he thinks. It's a... Uh, it's a horror story, so you know that when he meets the woman, something's going to go up. And it's a way that I didn't anticipate. It's not just that she's evil, and she's not. There's uh, some figures surrounding this, and I don't want to spoil that. And of course, we end with the the ad for the heavy metal t-shirts, which are always, always fun, these people fighting these robot aliens. Uh, but anyway, a fun issue. Um, really, you know heavy middle style where there's a lot of, you know, craziness for two or three pages, and you're like, well, what was that about? And, you know, Lovecraft inspired, meaning that these are primarily horror stories, um, but not necessarily all Lovecraft adaptations, and some of them have very little to do with Lovecraft. You see a lot of fictitious versions of Lovecraft. You see a lot of, you know, friends of the guy who went crazy, and you do get that long excerpt from the novelization of the Call of the Cthulhu movie, which now I kind of want to go check out the movie, although it was a very long and very technical excerpt. But overall, a pretty fun issue, and I was really glad to pick it up. H.P. Lovecraft, Heavy Middle, coming together. Really, really great. Anyway, uh, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You're really helping the channel out. I'll put a relevant playlist on the bottom if you guys want to see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom should be the Heavy Middle playlist.